The concrete foundations are in, steel beams are up, and the machines needed to turn salty ocean water into drinkable fresh water are being put together. Project manager Chris Stedman says seawater will come from the Encina power station next door. That plant draws salt water from the Agua Hedionda Lagoon. They're taking that seawater from their discharge channel, pumping it up the hill. You can see the pipe, you know, staged on the trench right there. It comes all the way up the hill, heads over that way, and over to our first stage of filtration, which is called pretreatment. The water will be filtered. Then, Stedman says, the salty water will be fed into one of several large electric pumps. When you run a current through there, it'll cause a stator to start spinning around. That spinning around happens through this shaft right here. That'll turn the impeller right here, or the pump. That starts scooping the water. That scooping action pressurizes the water, and that pressure forces the seawater through stacks and stacks of filters. It enters into all of these white pressure vessels, which contain our reverse osmosis elements. The salinity of the water changes. So you'll get double salty seawater on one side and very clean, almost a clean slate, uh, pure H2O, H2O on the other side. The fresh water is treated, then pumped into the regional water grid, and the salty water goes back into the ocean. Poseidon Vice President Peter McGlagan says the plant will make 50 million gallons of drinking water a day. The reason why we're doing this is because the Pacific Ocean is not dependent upon snowpack or rainfall. It's always going to be there, the largest reservoir in the world, if for that matter. And so here we have a truly drought-proof supply. McGlagan says if the Carlsbad facility works, more projects will likely be proposed. Environmental advocate Marco Gonzalez knows what's at stake. There have been more than 20 proposals to build various sized and types of desalination plants around California. We know with increasing drought conditions, there's going to be a lot more pressure for that. Gonzalez is worried about the environmental impact on sea life. Tiny creatures will be sucked into the plant and others might be hurt by the briny discharge. Because it takes a lot of electricity to remove the salt, He's also worried about the cost. It'll be more than two times the cost of what we currently pay for imported water out the gate. Now over time, those numbers will, will kind of come into parity for imported and produced water at a desal plant. But the big problem we have in Carlsbad is we still don't know how we're going to pay for it. San Diego County water managers say every water user in the county will share in the cost beginning next year. That, even though some water departments, like the city of San Diego, won't actually buy any desalinated water. Their customers will still see higher water costs. And there's a chance that could turn into a flat fee in 2016. Even so, the San Diego County Water Authority's Ken Weinberg says developing new supplies of water remains a key strategy. What we're seeing now in this drought is really the benefits of pursuing that strategy, where you've got local supplies, you've, you've conserved water. We're down 20% from just 2007. We've got recycled water, we've got brackish groundwater. And soon, desalinated water. In fact, there have been talks about a Camp Pendleton desalination plant three times the size of the Carlsbad facility. Weinberg says that's mostly long-term planning, but he says reducing reliance on imported water is very much a present-day concern. In the future, you know, we think we're going to be about half local supplies and conservation and about half imported water. And that local supply is a mix of seawater desalination, recycled water, groundwater, and continued and expanded water conservation. The Carlsbad plant will be the largest desalination facility in the Western Hemisphere. How it performs will likely influence how other California projects are viewed. Poseidon's Peter McLagan says he's confident that the technology will prove itself. We think once the plant does go online, everybody's going to realize that you know, this, this source of water from the Pacific Ocean can be and should be a part of our future water portfolio. McLagan says operators will start testing the plant next spring. He's hopeful the facility will begin full-time water production a year from now. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.